I want to talk about Dylan Carlson. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, th- this one's tough to talk about because I, I'm i paranoid. Uh, basically, I, I just assume people aren't going to really listen to what I'm saying. They're going to misinterpret it. They're going to, you know, they're going to be texting their friends or going on Twitter, and they're going to be saying, I, boy, Bernie's losing it. He's actually on the radio saying Dylan Carlson's better than Juan Soto. Uh, no, that's not what I think. <laughs> but um, it, it's just not as simplistic as, well, who's the better player, you know? And you, especially, you know, we know who the Cardinals are owned by, and we know that, look, they're going to pay out a lot of money to certain players, and, I find it hard to believe that they would if they get if they would get Soto and they really wanted to keep him here beyond 24. I just still find it hard to believe because we're talking about 500 million dollars now as may, is the, the the likely asking price. But that's you got another after this year, man, you got another two full seasons. What what's it going to be at the end of 2024? So Value for the dollar actually does figure into this, and uh, I'm I'm not saying that you know Dylan Carlson is some kind of untouchable, but what I'm saying is people need to think this through a little bit, and they also shouldn't be because I see Carlson's name all the time now in this uh, speculation gossip. The fantasy GMs out there, you know, they're treating Carlson like he's Paul DeYoung or something. And I'm just saying, you know, just slow down a little bit. Yeah, you know, Carlson can be really frustrating because, you know, there's been some inconsistency. But um, when the dude puts it all together and listen, he's he's actually done better than he gets credit for. Um, you know, he's a he's a really unique talent. Because if he's going to be their center fielder going forward, which would make a lot of sense, I, I mean, you you just don't find many center fielders in baseball who are 23 years old who play good defense in center. Uh, he's an excellent base runner. Uh, he does well in terms of on-base percentage, and that's going to get even better with more experience. And he's got power. And I know some people are disappointed he doesn't hit more home runs. I know my friend Jim Hewer is. But Mm -hmm. you still see a pretty damn good slugging percentage for a guy who's still just scratching the surface in the major leagues. That's my point. Uh, That power will come. And we see it. I mean, if you watch it when – when he's he's feeling good at the plate and all that, I mean, this guy's got – this guy's got abundant power. It's just a matter of putting it all together. But, but then when you say that, people think like, "Oh, so you you know, so you're falling for this, and oh, it's Tyler O'Neill all over again." And take a look at granted, Dylan Carlson, like all hitters in the major leagues, they go through uh, they go through these phases where they strike out too much. But Dylan Carlson's plate discipline is for such a young hitter has been really, really good, actually. And the numbers back that up. I said, hey, me imagining it, I go right where the facts are. So my point here is that he's a better player than we give him credit for because we expect so much and he does frustrate us. No question about it. But even with all the frustration and some of the inconsistency, he's still a really good player. And, you know, he – um since the all-star break of last year, you know, he's he's about 20, 25% above average offensively um, and can take his place with most center fielders, the best center fielders in baseball, when you combine the offense, the defense, and the base running. And if you want to trade him for Soto, I mean, first of all, I don't care. I mean, I care because I think the Cardinals would – I think the Cardinals need – if they're going to trade anything away for Soto, if we're going to play fantasy baseball GM here, I would be more inclined to just try to wow them with prospects because what's a prospect? A prospect's a guy that we think is going to be a really good major league player. That's the hope. 
but in Dylan Carlson, you got got a guy who is as young as so so uh, Juan Soto, and in fact, their birthdays date of birth is like literally two days apart. Carlson's two days older than Soto, and you have a guy twenty three years old who, if you combine, and this is the part that people don't want to do, and I don't know why. Um, if you factor in his defense and his base running and his offense. Uh, Let me tell you about this year, for example. Uh, Among major league outfielders, Juan Soto's fourth with 2.3 wins above replacement. Fourth overall in the majors. Now, this is the part, again, that people don't grasp about Carlson. And I have to admit that even I was surprised by this. And I'm usually on top of this stuff. So, once again, Soto... 2.3 2.3 wins above replacement, fourth among all outfielders in the majors. Dylan Carlson, 2.1 wins above replacement, seventh among major league outfielders. So why do so many of us look at him as if he's some kind of underachieving, ah, uh, he's okay, you know? <laughs> oh, you know, I thought he was going to be better. The other thing about Carlson, even though they're the same age, him and Soto, Soto's got more than like a, more than a thousand more plate appearances in the big leagues than Dylan Carlson. Dylan Carlson last year was his rookie year. Um, Soto broke in in 2018. He had a big head start on Carlson. Carlson continues to get better, and. After He didn't get a late start because he, he made it to the big leagues at age 21. Maybe he was even 20. But Soto's had a lot more experience in the big leagues, and I would hope that he would be better than, than Carlson, and he is. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that Carlson's just as good offensively or it's close. I'm not going to tell you that. I'm I'm predicating this on on you know three things. It's like well, there's more than that, but I I guess I could talk until five o'clock. <laughs> um, number one, he's just as young as Soto, and since the start of last year, you know, if you look at wins above replacement, even though Soto has more, Soto should have more because he's more experienced, and he is a better hitter. Um, but Carlson rates pretty well in that area. Like since the start of last season, which for all intents and purposes was his rookie year, um, since the start of 2021, you know, Dylan Carlson is sixth in the national league among outfielders and wins above replacement. And again, I didn't know that. I didn't realize that. That's good. Yeah. But if you think about the way he plays defense in center field, if you think about the way he runs the bases, he's excellent. And his offense is a work in progress. But, again, we're not talking about a guy that's hitting 190 and and never hits a double and he strikes out 35%. We're not talking about that. It's just I think there's more to come, and I think it will come. So that's number one. Just remember the difference in experience between these two. But where, where the, rubber reads, the rubber hits the road is value for the dollar. You know how much Juan Soto makes this year? He makes $17 million. And he's still got two more years. He's already, in other words, this was his, this that $17 million came out of his first year of arbitration. And next year it'll be his second year, and then 2024 will be his third year. Then he's a free agent. He's making $17 million this year. You know how much Dylan Carlson's making this year because he's not even into arbitration yet. And he won't be into arbitration. His first year will be 2024. So, he's, you know, you've got, a, you've got one of the better outfielders in the game already, and he ain't making anything. And I don't care who you are or how much you have to spend – when you have a really good young cost controlled player who's only going to get better, you got you better be a little careful about handing them off to somebody. And I think Bill DeWitt would be that kind of guy, and in that case he'd be very, very smart. 
Dylan Carlson at seven hundred thousand dollars. Next year he'll get a bump, but it'll be relative to what stars make. It'll still be really modest. He won't start hit, getting into the big money or bigger money until twenty twenty four, and he can't be a um, he won't become a free agent until after the twenty twenty six season. So you've got all this cost control of a really good young player who's, who's improving and is going to continue to improve. And this is the part where people don't want to hear it because they, they think Bill DeWitt should be judged by, well, I don't care if he's got a great value in a young outfielder. I want him to spend a billion dollars. You know, that's, they don't care. And the Cardinals, as we know, throw money away. They, they make big mistakes when they spend a lot of money. But I don't judge Bill DeWitt on that. I, I, you know, one of the best things, the reason they are so competitive all the time is because they make, for the most part, they're really good about developing their, their own players. And they also recognize, as they should, the cost control of having a good young player because that enables you to do some other things. Now, we could make the case they should do more with their savings. That's fair. But as I've said a million times, Bill DeWitt doesn't have to throw money in the Mississippi River to impress me. I'd rather have him be smart and selectively aggressive. Anyway, I want to know this. Soto can become a free agent after the 24 season. We already know that he turned down $440 million. We know that Boris has kind of floated the idea he's, he'll be a $500 million player. I think, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, that by the time – we get to the end of 2024. I think that 500 million is going to be a lot closer to five, 550 or even 600 million. Juan Soto will sign a deal worth tw- five. Let's just say 500 million. I'm going to be conservative. At the end of the 24 season, Dylan Carlson will still be under team control at a reasonable price for two more years after that. Carlson's a better defender. Every metric shows that. He can play center field. He's playing it well. Soto does not play center field at all, and he's below average in the corner. Soto, and you can find this if you even look at it, even scouts say not a good base runner at all. Carlson, very good base runner. So Carlson gives you strength in three, all three phases of the game. What he can't match is Sosa's offense. Soto's offense, sorry. Soto's offense. But he's still an above-average offensive player, and if you can play center field, I mean, that's really, really good. And when I say above-average, I mean, I'm not talking about like 2% above-average. You know, I'm talking about a guy that, again, he's only had 1,000 plate appearances uh, compared to 2,500 for Soto. Um, but if you look at, at uh, Carlson since the 2021 All-Star break, 335 on base percentage, and that's starting to climb. He's got a 458 slug. It's, a, it's an OPS just under 800, and he's been 22% above league average offensively over that time. He's got 17 homers and 37 doubles and 500 at-bats. This is not a slouch. It really isn't. You know, he's not so, so Soto offensively. But you're still talking about a guy with really terrific on-base skill and good power um, who can go get the ball and play excellent defense and can run the bases and get you some runs that way. And he is a value guy. He is a bargain for what he does. And if you want to trade for Soto, again, I know everyone's got the fever. I, I get it. You got people out there would trade their own children to get Soto. All right, I may even trade one one or two of my cats. <laughs> but the point the point is is like, do you really want to give Dylan Carlson to the Nationals when he's a guy that should be a big part of your future at a at a cost controlled bargain value price? And he doesn't hit the streets as a free agent until right before the 2027 season? So you want to give all that up in this lunge for Soto? 
who you're, who is going to go bye bye after 2024, and unless you give him 500 million or agree to be, to the ransom, the ransom price set set forth by Scott Boris, do you really want to do that? Here's an idea. Keep Carlson. If you're going to get Soto, if we're going to get into the fever swamp and we're going to go get Soto, all right, get Soto without giving up Dylan Carlson. Now you got something. Now you really got something. But if you subtract Carlson and you get Soto, you subtract Carlson in a Soto deal, what you're doing is removing one of your better players to get a guy, Soto, who is a better overall player, but the gap isn't as wide as you would think because Carlson's better at two of the three areas. Soto's a fat, fantastic on-base guy, hits for power, although not as much as in the past this year I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. But why would you subtract a guy who basically, for all intents and purposes, this year – is providing just as much value as Soto, except there's a there's a there's almost there's like a sixteen point three million dollar difference in their salaries, and that gap will be even bigger next year and the year after that. And to keep Soto after after you've given away or you traded away Carlson, same age, same age can play center field, switch hitter. You're, you would have to give this guy, I'm talking about Soto, $500 million. I don't know, man. If you believe in value for the dollar, and I know, again, I'm a, here I go again, you know, I know everybody's aroused over the shiny new toy. He's out there in D.C. Oh, we're going to see him over the weekend. Cardinals are there. So people kind of lose their minds. I get it. But if you're going to be pragmatic about this, I don't know. That just doesn't seem like a smart play to me. And it ain't going to be just Carlson for Soto. It's going to be some other goodies, too. So, why again, why would you do that? Unless you were fully prepared to sign this guy to a $500 million deal. Why would you do it? I, I just can't sign on with some of my friends and people I really respect say, well, you got two years of Soto and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I'll take that. I won't. Not at the cost of giving up Dylan Carlson, who can be a centerpiece for you for the next 10 years at a fraction of the cost that you would have to pay Soto. Um, You know what's funny about this is I hear Cardinals fans say this all the time. I get tired of talking about these prospects. That's all they are is prospects. We don't know how they're going to play in the major leagues. We don't know that. How many times do we hear about these prospects all over baseball and then you never hear from them again because they can't cut it in the big leagues? I don't want to hear about no stinking prospects. I, I don't know if these guys can play in the major league. Um, that's why you hold on to Carlson because you know he can play in the major, major leagues because he's proven it already. He's already an above-average player. One of the best center fielders, or one of the best outfielders in the National League in terms of all-around value. It's not just about hitting. It's about the other things, too. He's already shown he belongs in the big leagues, and he's actually improving, and he's going to continue to improve because he's relatively inexperienced with 1,000 plate appearances. And I, I think there's, there's a reason to believe confidently that he's going to get better and better and better. He's a student in the game. He puts a lot of work into it. He's smart. He's a really smart guy for age 23. So, Cardinals fans, you can't not, – not, to, to, to who this applies to, you can't have it both ways. You can't sit here and say, well, I don't care about trading these prospects. I don't know if they can play in the major leagues. Well, you can't – you can say it, but then you can't turn around and then say, well, trade him, Carlson. Why? Carlson's already shown he belongs here. He's already shown that he's a plus defender in center field. He's already shown he's got good on-base skill. He's already shown slugging ability that I think is going to get better. So if you say, well, we don't know about a prospect, okay, fine. But you do know about Dylan Carlson, right? And you do know that he, he belongs. You, you, do, you do know that he's proven himself. And you do know, if you're fair, that he's, he's going to get better and better. 
and a hell of a lot to, a hell of a lot less expensive than Juan Soto and I don't know why people don't factor that in I just I, I'm, I'm just fascinated by that the the business of baseball and it, yes it is a business if you have a guy who's not as good as Soto but he's really good anyway and he's cost controlled and you can keep him in a cardinal uniform for a fraction of the cost that it would it would take you to keep Soto in a uniform why don't you consider that factor? I'm confused why any, anybody would ignore that. So um, those are some of the things that are on my thought. And I know I took a long time, but, it, but you know, there was a lot to unspool there. There's a, there's a lot to talk about it because it's not just looking at baseball card stats, you know. You better factor in, especially if you all want and what they're going to have to do too. The Cardinals are going to have to rebuild their starting rotation. They're 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 gonna they're gonna need a major transfusion and that's gonna cost them a lot of money. So, you know, if you want to trade Dylan Carlson because you want the candy, you want the toy, okay, that's fine. Is it the best decision in terms of of the business of baseball? No, of course not. Because you know what you have in Carlson, and he's really good, and he's gonna get better, and he's not an expensive guy to have on your team. But if none of that matters to you, okay, that's fine. Doesn't matter to me either because I'm going to live happily ever after whether Soto's here or not. Same with Dylan Carlson. I'm just trying to, you know, put a little pragmatism into this. All right, I'm done. We just want to spend the money, Bernie. That's all. Get... I'm done. <laughs> You're done? All right. You I, know, since it, uh, he had he had a really bad April, and, yeah, and he, I was ripping him. I was ripping him. Yep. But since all right, here's the thing, you know, since the start of April, since the end of April, he's hitting two eighty six in this day and age. That's a really good batting average. He's got a three sixty two on base percentage. That's good. It's not Soto good, but it's good. That's the point. It's not Soto's four hundred on base percentage, but ain't nothing wrong with three sixty two. And since uh, May 1st, he's slugging 485. In this, in this season, that's a really good slugging percentage. And he's got an 848 OPS since the beginning of May. Since the beginning of May, Dylan Carlson is 42% above the league average offensively. Better trade him. <laughs> I- 23 years old. He's only had a thousand plate appearances in the bigs. Switch hitter, above average center fielder, smart guy, hard working guy. You can see the improvement if you pay attention. It's been pretty dramatic since the beginning of May. Better get him out of here. Bye bye, Carlson. Get on out get on down the road. Put gotta bring there. that gotta bring that new toy in here. Yeah. Not me. I'm no way. I co-sign on that idea. No, just not going to do it. It doesn't matter because it's not my decision. But I'm not going to do oh, it. Oh yeah. I, you know, one of the aspects of this for me, if if it was Juan Soto that gets traded to the Cardinals, and if it's either you know you you talked about Carlson, if Carlson leaves in that trade, you need another outfielder. Because Harrison, yeah, Bader's that's right. Not coming there you back. go. You know, I I, right. I just want to add that to it. But okay, great. Juan Soto for three, you know, two more years after this. Guess what? You still have another hole in your outfield because right. there is no Harrison Bader, and I don't think he won't be back for at least another month. If and that's a best case scenario, and I don't even think that's even. And he's hurt all the time. Yes. So oh, I I don't see you. I just again I don't see how you can give up on that. And Carlson is at least to me, Bernie. I don't know about you. I was a little skeptical at right field, but. Since he's been moved to center field, I like his defense more. Been great. I I see a, a really good ability to go back on balls and make plays, which I wasn't I wasn't sure he could do that in center field. He's proven it to us. Um, he's he's a more than adequate center fielder. And see, when you play, and if you have a center fielder, the center fielder has extra. He has much more value than a corner outfielder. You know. Yes. It's not. It's not easy to find good center fielders, and this guy's a much better hitter, obviously, than Bader. Oh yeah, one hundred percent, no doubt about that. I, you know, I 
I have been a little, like I said, I, I still admit I am disappointed that there aren't many, there aren't more home runs, but I see it trending upward again yeah. with him. I mean, he let off the game, was it, on Tuesday with a home run. Uh, he, you know, he's got doubles coming out, you know, no problem. He can hit the gap and he can run. He can do a lot of great things. I'm not, and I'm there with you. I'm not ready to give up on him and just throw him yeah. in as a as trade. And I also, I'm going to agree with you on that one, what you just laid out there. His value is much more than he's been given credit for. Let's put it that way. And and it's just, um, you got to factor in the, the cost differential between mm-hmm. the two, you know? Oh, absolutely. You just have to factor it in. You know, and John Denton, our friend from MLB.com, he made a good point about a couple things about Carlson that I actually read after I, you know, kind of put my thoughts together on this. But, you know, he wrote, quote, Carlson's versatility also extends beyond his spectacular defense. Not only is he a switch hitter, he's one of the few MLB players this season who have hit in all nine spots of the lineup. He's got the speed to be in the leadoff spot. He's got the disciplined eye to bat number two. He's got the pop to hit in the middle of the order and the reputation to hit down in the order to protect Goldie, Arenado, and O'Neal. Those, those are also good, insightful uh, insightful points. That's a really versatile guy. He's comfortable wherever you put him, you know? Yeah. And that's, that, that's something that should be appreciated. He got moved into the the, well, the leadoff spot this week. We've seen him, you know, back up behind Arenado and do just fine. You see him in a two spot where he does damage. He's and when he was struggling, he got moved down seven or eight, and he found a stroke again. And you're going, wow, this guy needs to be moved up again because he does a lot of things well. You mentioned defense. Uh, he runs the bases pretty darn well. Uh, it's just there's a lot to like there, and you just don't throw those things away. Those are intangibles you need with winning ball clubs and winning ball players. It makes a difference. It really does. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I, I just uh, it'll be interesting to see how this all plays out. Now, I just spent all this time talking about it. One of the reasons why I wanted to talk about Carlson is I, I just wanted to kind of put Carlson in a better perspective because I think people are pretty dismissive of some things without looking – at the closer picture. I, I don't think, uh, I think there's probably 1% of our audience and I'm not knocking our audience because what I said earlier is I was surprised too. I didn't know this, that if you, if you, you, if you weigh the, his value in all three areas of the game, he's a guy since the start of last year's highest, sixth highest rated outfielder in the national league, because it's not just about swinging the bat, you know, but he does have value as a hitter, but, you got You can't overlook the other two things, and we're seeing that with our own eyes. I mean, people have been raving about him as a center fielder, and and the base running's really good. I mean, his extra bases taken percentage is really high. No, he's not a thirty stolen base guy, but I, stolen bases are fine to me. I want to see how you go from first to third on a single. Do you score from a double from first base? I want to see stuff like that. Um, are you able to snatch an extra base on a ground ball? You know, or you know, do you read a play right, and you get that extra base by being smart? He he's that guy. He he, he rolls up a lot of extra bases uh, by by using great judgment on the base paths. And this is a really young player. You know, mm-hmm. you you know, I think sometimes you you think of him as like a guy that's twenty six or twenty seven or something. No, like I said, him and Soto it's a two days difference on their date of birth. Literally, Carlson's two days younger than Soto, or two days older than Soto. So well, let's just go ahead and call it a tie, you know. But again, I'm not saying he's better than Soto offensively, but I'm just saying when you look at the all-around play, and you look at the cost of the two players we're talking about here, I just would. I'm just saying, be careful, as Jim Hewer said. If you trade Carlson, Soto comes in, then you lose Soto. But even even if you, you even before we think about what Soto can you keep him will he sign here even before we even get to that part like Jim Hewer just mentioned you know you're down an outfielder and if you look at the outfielders they have now I know that they could move Jordan Walker to the outfield I know they can do some things like that and there's Big Burleson who uh, is the Jake Woodford of hitters apparently. Um, <laughs> No, I, I know they I would have that. some options, but I think a guy like Carlson would still be 
a guy you really want in your outfield. And, you know, uh, I'll just throw in the fact that Burleson could be, might be used to go get yourself a pitcher. So he could be even he not be. even be in the mix, to your point. Uh, you'd be like, well, we at one point we had a whole bunch of outfielders. Now we don't have enough, which is not a situation you want to put yourself in when you're dealing with this whole situation. Right. So it's, uh, I know this. There'll be a lot of noise between now and that deadline on Tuesday. Some of it will be frustrating. Some of it will be like, ooh, here we go. And uh, I just know when the, when the dust all settles, I'd like to see where this thing is at. Have they fixed pitching? Have they, you know, did they make a move for an outfielder? Did Who stayed? Which of these prospects can we continue to talk about being a factor for the franchise? And, uh, you know, it, it, it's a part of being a baseball fan at this time of the year. Right. Who's going to be the next one? Who's our, you know, what is going to this thing going to look like and i know it's been quiet in their neighborhood but what's milwaukee going to do and how does that affect what the car you know how it's going to affect the cardinals with this race moving forward they want to center the, i've been keeping close tabs on mm-hmm. that they they really need and they really want a center fielder i mean because mccutcheon can't I, you know i really mccutcheon's a classy player and i i like seeing him play and He's not what he used to be, but he's still a guy you have a lot of respect yeah. for. But he can't play center field very well anymore. And Tyrone Taylor has held his own, but he's not very good out there either. He's a corner outfielder. Mm-hmm. They need a center fielder in the worst way. The question I have is who's out there? I don't know. I don't think there's much. I think I was reading something in The Athletic about that. If you're looking for a center fielder, this is a bad time to be looking for a center fielder. Yeah, I, I, I've been doing a quick – Search in my head. I don't think there's many guys out there. You go, oh, yeah, that's a perfect fit for them. But I will bet you Stearns will do something. And you'll go, oh, yeah. okay, maybe that'll work. And usually it does when he does stuff like that. Won't be a super sexy pick, but it'll be like, oh, I forgot about that guy. Yeah, I guess he could play center field. So all part of the conversation. The uh, Cardinals have a puzzle to solve, don't they? But, you know, again, I I know I'm harping about this part, but it's good because we're talking about center fielders. Milwaukee needs one. They can't find one. The Cardinals have one, and he's really good. He's a plus center fielder that actually performs well offensively, and I firmly believe the best is yet to come with him too. So Milwaukee's like, well, what are we going to do? I'm like, well, gosh, we got to play Tyrone Taylor in center field, even though he's a corner outfielder. Oh my gosh! Well, yo, we all love McCutcheon, but man, he he just doesn't go get the rock anymore. You know, not not as well as he needs to. So what do we do? Boy, there's nothing out there. And then here in St. Louis, you have, in my opinion, too many people that would be way too quick to trade Dylan Carlson away. That doesn't make a lot of sense. No. At at a time where teams are searching for center fielders, you got one here. It's pretty damn good. You know. Oh, yeah. And Soto cannot play center, period. So, And that gives Carlson at least some extra value there. You know, Michael Taylor would be a brewer. That's a good idea. No, you know? you know what? That's a good Yeah, that's a good he, idea. That's he, a good idea. I just was like, all right, who? and I was just scouring through my head. We know the Dodgers are not the Dodgers. I'm sorry. The Royals just traded Benintendi last night. Uh Michael Hay Taylor would be would be a perfect brewer to go fit in their center field spot. And he's having a, a decent year offensively. Mm-hmm. I mean, he has been offensively going all the way back to 2018 with Washington, uh, like four years in a row. I mean, way below average in terms of like OPS plus, you know. Right. This year he's about 12% above average. So he's having a nice year. It would be a good time to get him. See what uh... – <laughs> The Royals need to make some moves to get some more young talent in there. So, I don't know. We'll see. Trader Jim. <laughs> there you go. I, I'm not trying to help the Brewers, though. That's the problem. <laughs> we don't want to help them too much. Hey, maybe a little. <laughs> <laughs> maybe a little. No, I, I, I get you. I, uh, no, definitely, definitely don't. 